All right, here we are at Titan Machine Tool. Gonna do some grinding. We're grinding those keyway disc things that I was making in the other video. These two happen to be the same thickness, so we're gonna grind them both at the same time. Most important thing when setting this stuff up is making sure that the chuck is clean. Magnetic chuck, make sure it's clean. Make sure the parts are clean. Make sure there's no burrs on your parts. So, once you do that, then you can get going. I already took a quick pass over here, so when I start going, I can, I can really just get to it. But we're on the Jones and Shipman model 1400 grinder here. We got hydraulic left and right, in and out. We got flood coolant. We got a travel dial up here. We got an incremental dial here to keep track. Each line is 50 millionths. So, this is an old machine. This thing's like, this thing's like 1980, 1982 probably, around there. Give or take a little, but it was in the tool room mostly all its life. Did some production work, but mostly production tool room type work. Anyways, here it is. It works okay. She's a little tired, but she goes good. I can't split tents. I mean, I'm on a wooden floor. What the hell? Machine dances around a little bit, but it's fine for what we're doing here. I set my dogs. So my travel is good. I already touched off and sparked out on the pot already. Yeah, man, I already sparked out. So let's go. Here, we're going to get it going. Got a little safety feature here where you can't engage the hydraulic feed if if the handle is engaged. This engages the handle, so you can throw the table by hand, but you can't engage the hydraulics if the handle is engaged. So you got to disengage the handle that is freewheeling right there. No smash ups. So we'll get the table flowing, get it going, and we go back and forth, cooling down. We'll go down. We'll take. 1,000 first pass. Here we go. Start cutting. So it's probably not a full thousand because like I said, I had just sparked out on the pot a little bit, touched it, make sure there was no high spots. Make sure we didn't have any unexpected wheel blowing up or something of that nature. The pots definitely won't fly off. There's plenty of material sticking them to the chuck, but we don't want bad things happening with the grinder, you know? So we're just going to cut the clean on this side. There's about six thousands total that needs to come off. This is the, oh, we put the good side down. When we did them on the lathe, we faced them, faced and turned, so the side we faced is down. So I'm going to shut my coolant off here, I'm going to turn my cross slide off, I'm going to turn off my hydraulic feed, and I'm going to bring my wheel back to the other side. I always grind in the same direction. I start back here, I grind this way. I go back, I start back here, I grind this way. You can, I, I guess if you're just like grinding off a whole bunch of material and you're going to redress the wheel a couple times, you can go back and forth either way, either way, it's not going to make much difference. But when I come this way, you got to picture the wheel, okay, the bottom edge of the wheel after you dress it. The leading edge that's doing the cutting over here, it's going to break down faster than the back. So eventually you end up with a wheel that looks like this, exaggerated. The front edge of that wheel breaks down, breaks down, breaks down. And depending on how wide the wheel is, this one's three quarters, so this one's pretty fat. As you get back, less and less of it breaks down. And you get to that back edge of it right there, and it's almost still exactly where it was when you started. And it wears down at a less fast rate than the front leading edge. The front leading edge is always going to break down faster. So I always use the front leading edge when I'm roughing. Cut it down, cut it down, cut it down, cut it down. And then when I go to take my finish pass, I'll redress the wheel. I won't do that here. Here it don't matter what we're doing. We're just making two sides parallel. But if I was doing something fussy or square corners or grooves or slots, 
got to keep redressing the wheel to make sure that that flat surface that's actually doing the grinding is flat and parallel and it's not worn down and looks like this. So before I keep cutting, let's go over, you're going to ask, what am I using for a wheel? That's what I'm using for a wheel. You can say, what are you using for grinding fluid? That's what I'm using for grinding fluid. It's an 8 by 24 chuck. So this machine's got some decent capacity. We can cut pretty good sized pots or stack them on and do multiples like we're doing now. But let's get back to making sparks. Turn that on, turn the table on, bring the wheel a little closer to the parts. Bring the wheel down, 1,000. Come back on over, turn on the cross feed. Sparks. Alright, so we're coming off the pots now. I turned my cooling off. Turn my crust feet off. I turn the table off. I bring the wheel back across. I won't go across the pots. You don't want to drag the wheel across the pots. So we'll go back in. Bring it down another thou. Come back up over here. Turn the coolant on. Turn the table on. Creep up a little closer. Cross slide. Sparks. just about here. Turn the coolant off. So we'll take a peek at them this time. Turn the cross slide off. Turn the table off. Let's take a look at them. We'll re-engage the handle. Crank the table over. Take a look at them. Uh, they need some more. That one needs some more. That one's pretty, pretty good, close to being good. But they both finish at the same thickness, so we'll cut some more off this one until it cleans up. Disengage the handle. I'm gonna bring my wheel back on the other side of the parts. Turn the table on. Turn the coolant on. Bring it down another thousandth of an inch. Crust feed. I think you get the picture of what we're doing here. 
we'll take a look at them again. It doesn't take much when you grind them to get things to clean up. You know, the toolbox might look kind of ugly, but they usually clean up. It doesn't take much. Let's take a look at this again here. Yeah, see, we still got a little witness ring around here. But that's almost all cleaned up. I bet another half a thou, one thou more will clean that right up. This one's good. I could take it off if I wanted to now, but I want to keep them both the same thickness because I'm going to flip them both over. So this way, when I flip them both over and I start grinding, it, it, it hits them both at the same time. If I took this one off now and just ground another thou off of this one, I flipped them over, I put them both back on. This one hits first, then that one hits. This way, the material's got to come off anyways, so... I'll take a little more off this side until this one cleans up, and then I'll flip them over and do the other side. But that's how I do my blanks, blanking them out here on the surface grinder. The uh, Jones Shipman Model 1400. This guy's old, like I said, she's like 1980s, so. But she's a little dirty, she's a dirty girl today. I gotta clean her up. I gotta douche her off a little. Yeah, see, I gotta trap a dial over here too. Got no readout, no digital readouts or anything, but I gotta trap a dial on the. Uh, and the Y in and out. I got a travel dial on the Z up and down. You know, for what I do, it's good. And like I said, the dial on here reads in 50 millions increments. So every one little click, this is the fine adjustment right here. When I pull that out, I can just dial it. When I put this guy in and I turn it, it's only gonna move 50, 50 millions at a click. So you're splitting tents with this thing. It's pretty good. So I'll take another pass on here, like I said, to clean this guy up. But we're at 12 minutes now. So we're going to let you go. Titan Machine Tool signing off on the Jones and Shipman Model 1400 grinder today.